Hi everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. So thank you so much for joining me here today. So today I wanted to talk about Elizabeth Bathory, who you may not know, or you may know about, but she is listed as the original blood countess and is said to be the earliest recorded female serial killer who possibly murdered up to 600 people. So if you're interested in hearing about Elizabeth and how she got to this infamous title of hers, then let's get into it. So I did just want to start off by trying something different. So today you'll see that I won't be doing my makeup while I'm talking to you. And I wanted to know in the comments below if you prefer me to do my makeup while I talk to you or if you just prefer kind of like a sit down story time chat or if you really don't mind at all. So let me know down below what you think. But without any further ado, let's get into it. Intended for mature audiences only. So Elizabeth Bathory was born on August 7th, 1560 in Hungary. So Elizabeth grew up with one of the most affluent and prominent families in Europe. So she grew up very wealthy, had a very bougie upbringing. She was highly educated and she also spoke several languages such as Hungarian, Greek, German, Slovak and even Latin. But when Elizabeth was growing up, she unfortunately suffered a lot of health problems. And historians kind of believe that her health problems were caused because her mother and father were actually first cousins. So there may have been a lot of interbreeding which may have caused these health problems, but there's no proof. So that is just what historians think. But she did suffer from seizures, so she did have epilepsy. But not only did Elizabeth have to suffer horrible seizures and fits, she would also have to witness very, very horrific acts of violence within the castle that she grew up in. But some sources said that she did not really act like how you would think a young girl or young woman would act, especially when seeing these really violent acts. Some sources said that she would see people in pain and she would start laughing. And one incident that was recorded was where a man who was caught stealing was having his flesh kind of sewn onto a horse and she was just laughing at this because he was being tortured and apparently she would not react at all when people were being tortured or people were being beaten within the castle some sources even said that she would love to see these types of beatings but at the age of around 10 years old people noticed that elizabeth kind of was starting to grow up to look like such a stunner she was said to be very beautiful and soon after people started noticing her beauty she became engaged to a 15 year old count named Ferenc Nadowski. While she was living in the palace of her fiance Ferenc, she learned how to manage the estate by her mother-in-law. So her mother-in-law taught her how to run everything to make sure how to keep everything safe and clean within the castle or palace. And I cannot confirm or deny, but legend said that Elizabeth had an affair with a peasant or commoner and she actually became pregnant and her fiance eventually did find out and she got rid of her baby before her fiance knew what the gender was he took the peasant or the commoner and he castrated him and then he fed his body to the wild dogs that were living in the area so i cannot confirm or deny but so Ferenc and Elizabeth were married in May 1574, when Elizabeth was only 14 years old. And let me tell you, this wedding was fancy. They were said to have four and a half thousand people in attendance. And this celebration went on for three days. And Ferenc gifted his new fiance or wife, sorry, wife, with a new castle and this castle was named Chastitza. And it just so happened that this castle Chachitza was one of the darkest most gothic looking castles in the whole of hungary and it was surrounded by farmlands and forests and unfortunately would be the place where a lot of horrific crimes that elizabeth committed happened so now that ferenc and elizabeth were married they now linked two very very powerful estates together but during the early years of marriage they didn't really spend much time together elizabeth was mostly at the castle running the estate and making sure that everything was in order and ferenc was generally at war and they were busy fighting of the Ottomans at the time. Ferenc was apparently a very good warrior but he also had a very brutal killing style and I know that any killing is essentially brutal but you get what I'm trying to say. He was very violent in the way that he killed and he would terrify a lot of his enemies as well as the people he was fighting with 
with how brutal and violent that he was in the way that he would kill. So the Turks did end up invading Hungary in 1591 and this would later become known as the Long War which lasted from 1593 to 1606. And because this war was so long the Hungarian economy really really suffered but Elizabeth never noticed because Ferenc kept showering her with gifts. But it was said that Elizabeth and Ferenc became so wealthy during this time of war that they even lent money to the government in order to help them and help the country stay afloat. Remember Elizabeth's castle, Katitsa? Well, the Turks actually threatened to invade her castle. And of course, Elizabeth was like, no, I know how to defend a castle. And she did, actually. She defended this castle very well. And it was said that during this war, a lot of people were obviously starving and a lot of people didn't have work. So she was said to bring peasants and people who were starving into the castle and she would feed them, clothe them, or just give them a place to stay. But remember, like I said earlier, Elizabeth and Ferrek did not spend a lot of time together during their early years in their marriage. But when they did, they bonded over how much they loved to hurt people, especially how they loved to torture young teenage girls. So it was said that he taught her how to torture. One of the techniques that he taught her was to roll up oil laced paper that was like rubbed in oil and he would roll it up and place it in between these girls toes and then set this oil paper alight. And he also gave Elizabeth a clawed glove so that she could scratch the girls' faces when they disobeyed or did something wrong. Obviously, it's by the sounds of it, Varek, her husband, had a lot of influence into how Elizabeth kind of grew up and what she enjoyed, or to kind of fuel what she already enjoyed. It was said that a lady named Anna Davolia came into the house and she was one of the first kind of servants that Elizabeth and Ferrek had together as a couple. And when she later became known and later trusted by Elizabeth, she was a massive influence to Elizabeth and the horrible things that would go on. A lot of people said that Anna was a witch. And as soon as Anna entered the house, it was said that Elizabeth's personality went a full 360. She completely changed into something that a lot of people didn't know that she had in her. And it was said that her husband, Ferrek, taught her how to torture, but Anna taught her how to kill. So remember, Ferrek was out at war, and while Anna was in the house as a servant, Elizabeth became responsible for a lot of murders that took place during this time that Anna was in the house. A lot of servant girls would disappear, and no one would bat an eye, because because sadly during this time these girls were disposable so you would get one servant girl in and if she disappeared there would be so many others that you could just get in and if the families did ask where their daughters and young girls were remember that Ferrek and Elizabeth held a lot of power so even if these families would ask where their daughters were you couldn't really go against nobles you couldn't really ask and question these really powerful people. So sadly, Elizabeth was kind of untouchable and she could continue to torture and kill these girls without any consequence. But even though this family had so much power, they couldn't really stop the rumor mill from continuing. And a lot of rumors started going on around the local like farmland and especially the town that they lived in. And a local pastor became really suspicious because he would have to come through to Elizabeth's castle often in order to give funeral rites and to all of these little servant girls that were dying apparently of cholera as Elizabeth said. One priest actually did pull Elizabeth aside and said quote your grace should not have acted so because it offends the Lord and we will be punished if we do not complain to you and criticize your grace and in order to confirm that my words are true we need only exhume the body and you will find that the marks identify the way in which death occurred. And Elizabeth hated this. She was so angry that this priest even dared like say anything to her or question her. She stormed out of the castle and her husband had to kind of deal with the aftermath and just calm everyone down. Elizabeth even threatened the priest to kind of say, I have really powerful relatives and who are you to question me? You don't know what could happen to you. Side note, Ferrek and Elizabeth had five children together and their youngest child was born in 1598. Around 1601, Elizabeth's husband Ferenc kind of got really sick and it was not really stated what he got sick of or what his illness was but it led to paralysis in his legs and in 1604 Elizabeth's husband Frank passed away which brought 29 year marriage to an end and at the time that he passed away Elizabeth was 44 years old and another 
shift kind of happened in Elizabeth's personality as soon as her husband died. She kind of became a lot more vengeful, a lot more torturous, and a lot more sadistic. And it was said that she kind of became obsessed with the torture of young girls. She had such a taste for blood. She had such a taste for hurting people. She kind of felt that murdering of her servants became too much to handle because she would have to replace her servants when she murdered them. So she decided now that she was, instead of getting servants in, she was going to lure young girls in from the surrounding farmlands of the castle. And it was even said that when she was done torturing these young girls, she would kind of just throw her, their bodies over the wall so that the wild dogs or wolves would just eat them. It is important to note that Elizabeth didn't do this alone. She apparently had quite a few accomplices, but the most sinister of her accomplices was still her, her most trusted servant, Anna. It was said that some of her accomplices involved her friend, Dorka, as well as a washer who would work in the castle and a lady who would look after the children. So Anna, Elizabeth's servant, and Dorka, Elizabeth's friend, apparently would go head to head and try to kind of outshine each other and try and impress Elizabeth the most so they would try and inflict the most torture on the girls. So how the girls would end up being tortured was if they did something wrong in the castle or if they misplaced something, if they did something wrong, if they didn't stitch something right or not complete their tasks as they were expected to do. And when these reports were given to Elizabeth, she apparently yelled and screamed at them, but she would make the punishments kind of fit the crime. So basically what she would do is, for example, if the girl missed a stitch or she sewed something wrong, then she would be stabbed multiple times with a sewing needle or a knitting needle. And they would have needles stuck into their fingers. And generally the girls would always be stripped naked before they were tortured. And it was said that Elizabeth loved to psychologically torture her victims as well. So I'm assuming that stripping them naked was a form of psychological torture and cruelty. But Elizabeth was quoted saying, after sticking a needle in one of the girl's hands, that, quote, if it hurts the whore, she can pull it out. So naturally, when the girls heard Elizabeth say this, I'm assuming that they would want to pull the needle out because that's what she said. But if the girls ended up pulling this needle out, Elizabeth would then cut their finger off. But if Elizabeth believed that the crime should be punished more severely, she would then take the girls into the torture chambers where mostly her accomplices would do the dirty work, remember Anna and Dorka. There were rumors going around that Elizabeth would kind of bathe in the blood of the virgin girls so that she could stay young and kind of like vampire vibes. But there was no real concrete proof on this because the girls who testified later on in, in a trial, they didn't mention any of this. So I'm not sure if it's true. I, I, I doubt it. At the trial, the girls did say that they had to clean up a lot of blood that were in these torture chambers. So that was maybe where this rumor kind of went. But we're skipping, but we'll get there. So in 1609, Anna, who we remember was Elizabeth's servant and closest like confidant in this torture, she passed away and they assumed that it was via a stroke. And soon after Anna died, apparently Elizabeth went through quite a depression. Her closest confidant died, her husband was gone, and all of her children had kind of grown up and moved out of the castle. They had their own families, so she was all alone now. But on the cherry on top of her depression and her children moving out, Elizabeth was in a lot of financial debt. But she did end up speaking to one of her ladies-in-waiting, who was named Erzi Majorova, who people also believed was a witch. But she kind of influenced Elizabeth with this idea that she should ditch the farm girls and the poorer servants that she was using using to torture, she should move on to more affluent young lady. Because Erzi believed that if she moved on to girls that had more nobility and were richer, that Elizabeth's financial troubles would turn around. To be fair, she probably only just wanted richer girls because she was running out of peasant girls or farm girls to torture. But whatever the reason it was that she switched from farm girls and peasant girls to now noble girls, she ended up opening a finishing school. And this finishing school was where they would teach like girls young manners, how to act eloquently and properly. But unfortunately it was where she could continue her torturous ways. And not only would she have this now influx of noble girls to torture, she would also have the parents who were paying for their girls to go there 
who would inevitably help with the, the bills. But Elizabeth was now torturing young girls with noble families and noble backgrounds, which means money. And noble families would come looking for their daughters. They're not just going to leave their pride and joy and not ask any questions about it. I know that she knew that peasants or servants couldn't lay any charges against noble people, but noble people or richer people can do that to each other, you know? But Elizabeth didn't care. She would make up lies and excuses that the children kind of got into a fight and they killed each other and then the head of the girl who survived in the killing she killed herself. But no one believed her. Some of the noble men and noble women, they went to King Matthias II, opened up an investigation in order to find out what happened to these young girls. And so an investigation was given to a man who was of the highest ranking, and this was Georgi Thurzo. Which was funny enough, Elizabeth's ex-husband, remember Ferenc? That was his really good friend. But it was said that even though Ferenc and Georgi were very good friends, he still treated Elizabeth with respect. But his alliance and his loyalty was to the king. So Georgi did end up getting a lot of witnesses and listening to what these girls say. But unfortunately, there were some servants who did survive Elizabeth's torture, but not to the extent of the really badly tortured girls, the ones in the torture chamber. So he had witnesses, but none of them could really testify to the really, really gruesome tortures that happened in the chamber. But he did feel that Elizabeth was guilty for the crimes that these girls were saying. A lot of the servant girls would say they heard screaming, and a lot were really severely tortured, they just didn't end up going into the torture chambers. But Georgi obviously felt bad that this was Ferenc's wife. So he did end up writing to Elizabeth's family to ask them for advice and what he should do. But in private, Elizabeth's family and Georgi came up with an agreement that Elizabeth can be investigated, but she will not be taken to trial. And interestingly enough, it didn't seem that Elizabeth's family ever denied that she was guilty. So by December 1610, Georgi believed that he had enough evidence to arrest Elizabeth. But Georgi wanted to make 100% sure that he had the right evidence so he could arrest this very noble woman. So Georgi came up with a plan to ask Elizabeth to invite the king, Matthias, and Georgi to a dinner. And he went and asked Elizabeth and she was like, okay, fine, I'll have you guys over for dinner. And and he said that she was very nervous, but apparently the dinner went quite well, except the last course. Apparently their servants brought out this beautiful platter of dessert. But when the king and Georgi ate this pudding, they got very, very sick and they thought that Elizabeth was trying to poison them. So they booked it out of there. They ran as fast as their little legs could take them and they were gone. But on New Year's Eve, 1610, Georgi with a lot of armed guards returned to the castle that Elizabeth was staying in and they just sat outside and they waited. Then Elizabeth and Erzy came out of the gate and remember people accused Erzy of being a witch. Erzy and Elizabeth came out of the gates and sat in front of the castle and it was said that around the castle was a cemetery that Elizabeth built. So Erzy and Elizabeth went to the cemetery to cast a spell that Elizabeth would be protected from any investigation and Georgi and that Georgi, the investigator, would be killed. So Georgi and all these armed guards were listening. They didn't do anything. And then when Elizabeth and Erzy went back into the castle, they followed through the gate. And as soon as they went into, into the castle, they immediately saw a body of a mutilated girl. And this girl was basically just in the entrance, like gates of the castle. And then when they walked further and went into the entranceway of the actual castle, like the door of the castle, they saw another two bodies. And when Georgi and the rest of the men went into the castle, they heard a lot of screaming and a lot of banging. So they followed these sounds and eventually were led into the torture chambers, where it was said that Elizabeth's accomplices were busy torturing the girls. And it was unclear whether the investigator saw Elizabeth actually torturing any of the girls. But from all of this, Georgi knew, okay, it's done, she's guilty. So Elizabeth was dragged out of the castle, taken from the castle, and she was immediately claiming her innocence and was basically blaming the servants for everything that happened. And the king and Georgi were not convinced that she was not guilty. So they ironically threw her into her own dungeon within her castle. But at the end, 306 people testified against Elizabeth and even her own accomplices turned on her which kind of shot them in the foot because they implicated themselves in this. But at the end, the total number of victims that Elizabeth tortured and murdered kind of vary, and it's either from 80 people 
or 600 people. Elizabeth's accomplices were put on trial in 1611 and some of the servants did speak out against them and all of her accomplices were given death sentences. But before their death sentence was um, kind of taken out, they were all tortured in their own way. So all of their fingers were taken off with metal tongs and then they were put to death and then tossed into a bonfire. But Georgi did keep his word and never put Elizabeth on trial, but she was convicted and sentenced to life in prison within her own castle but she was confined to one of the dungeons so she was not allowed out of this dungeon and Elizabeth was not visited by anyone during her time except for the priest and by Georgi sometimes and on August 21st 1614 Elizabeth complained to a guard that her hands were very cold and the guard said to her listen just go back to bed and try and get some sleep and Elizabeth did go to sleep but she never woke up and Elizabeth's body was buried at her castle apparently Elizabeth's body did not stay there for very long because it was said that some of the girls that Elizabeth tortured she did not get rid of all the bodies she actually buried them at the castle so a lot of the people within the town and within the city disagreed that Elizabeth should be buried with them and her body was apparently moved to, to the Bathory crypt but in 1995 when the Bathory crypt was open it was said that Elizabeth was nowhere to be found but that is all I have for you today on this I hope you enjoyed this it was a bit different don't forget to let me know if you prefer me to do my makeup or just listen to me chat and show pictures but other than that this was a very different case a very interesting case also please let me know your thoughts down below and whether you enjoy these type of true crime videos i hope you have a great day further please stay safe out there clearly there are a lot of creepy people out there but other than that i hope to see you again soon bye